Start off this build by gluing the wing sections together. Add a heavy amount of glue to each wing section, then press it together with the adjacent part. Then pull it apart. Make sure that both sides are coated thoroughly. After approximately 15 minutes, the glue should be aggressively tacky. Press the wing cords back together and they should hold. Wait another hour for them to fully cure before moving on to the next step. The spars should run from one inch back on the wing tip to about halfway into the blunt section of the center of the plane. Use a pen and a straight edge to make your marks along the airplane and then using a good sharp knife, cut about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch deep into the foam. Then fill this cut full of glue and embed your spar. Be careful to not run your fingers down the spar or it will give you a terrible fiberglass splinter. The central spar is located approximately two and a half inches from the rear of the blunt section. Using a tape measure, measure two and a half inches from the back of the airplane and make a mark. Then use either the spar or a straight edge to measure all the way across the airplane until the spar hits your other two spar tracks. Just as with your other two spars, you want to cut about 1 8 3 16 of an inch deep into this section. I'm using a hot work tool made from a cheap soldering gun to open up the cuts that I previously made with my knife. While this is not required, it certainly makes installing the spars easy. Once done, fill the tracks full of the glue and then embed your spars starting from one end and working to the other side. Again, do not work your fingers down the spars as this can leave terrible splinters that will itch for days. As you see here, each of the spars is cut to size. This can be done with a pair of wire cutters, diagonals, or even a pair of sharp scissors. Once completed, the spar should sit just barely beneath the surface of the foam. Repeat this process for the bottom side of the airplane. Again, cut between 1 8 and 3 16 of an inch deep into the foam, and then fill with glue and install your you want your spars to line up exactly with the spars on the other side. This creates an I-beam and makes the aircraft very, very stiff. Once completed, lay the airplane face side up and let it set for two hours before proceeding on to the next step. This is a good time to sand down the airplane. Use 150 to 220 grit over the entire surface. Do this before and after painting as this will make the laminate adhere very well. No extra adhesive is needed. You can paint the airplane with anything you like, even a solvent-based paint. It will not hurt the foam. Once you've knocked off all the burrs and high points in the foam, lay the laminate over top of the airplane with the dull side down. This is the adhesive side. Then, using a hot iron or even a clothing iron set to approximately 200 degrees, Work over the entire airplane using a good amount of pressure to work the laminates adhesive into the foam. I like to start from the middle and work my way out towards the edges. Since the airplane is contoured, you'll have to slice the laminate at the joints. And then once you do, the laminate should fold over nicely, and then you can start coating the bottom. You'll want to overlap the laminate over the leading edge of the airplane to give it some extra strength for those impacts with things like trees, poles, and even things sticking out of the grass on land. You will want to laminate both the top and the bottom side of the airplane. Make sure to pull it tight, especially around the back of the airplane where the elevons go. This will make sure that the elevons don't become detached in flight. You also might note that there are two small stitch spars towards the edge of the plane where the midwing section crosses over the wing tip. These prevent the airplane from tearing apart in the case of a hard impact with a pole. If you saw the preview video, that airplane actually survived the hit, and that's because of those small stitch spars you see in the rear of the airplane. Once the airplane is fully wrapped in laminate, I like to go back over it with a lot of pressure. You can see I'm using an oven mitt to protect myself from the heat, and then I'm putting a lot of downward pressure into the laminate, pressing it hard into the foam. This makes sure that it doesn't come loose anywhere and actually makes the airplane a lot stronger and easier to repair. I'm using about 25 pounds of downward pressure to push the laminate into the foam. The elevons are attached to the airplane with simple laminating film. The first thing you need to do is cut them to fit the sides of the wing. 
I'm using a basic razor knife, but if you have a saw available, that's probably an easier way to do it. It doesn't have to be a very tight fit, you need enough room for it to move around. But the tighter the fit, the better it's going to fly. The way I adhere this is simply by placing the laminate over top of the airplane and simply laminating right down into the elevon. Then I'll flip the elevon upward, fold the laminate underneath, and then continue laminating all the way around the rest of the contour of the airplane. Once done, I'll cut the rest of the laminate off. Perhaps I should have mentioned this earlier, but I've already sanded down the wooden elevons here. It should be noted that I'm following the complete contour of the airplane, including the trailing edge. This keeps the elevon nice and sturdy against the airframe. Now it's time for the motor mounts. Since this airplane was designed as a twin, I'm going to use two motor mounts, one on either side of the blunt section. This gives adequate separation so the props don't interfere, but if you want to put them closer together so they nearly touch, it'll make an amazing howling sound. I'm cutting out a notch to the back of the airplane just to be sure the motor mounts fit square. Now I'll add a good amount of glue to the wooden plates and glue them to the back of the blocks. Remove them and let it dry for 15 minutes. Once the glue is dry, press the motor mounts right into the back of the wooden blocks. You'll see here that I'm sanding down my motor mounts, and this is because I intend to laminate them in place. In a hard wreck, the motor mount can sometimes tear, and this prevents it from happening. Now I'll put a good amount of glue on the inside of the motor mount and just simply slip it right over top of the airplane in place and press down. I'll come back in about 15 to 20 minutes and press this together. I'm also adding a little bit of hot glue here just to make sure that these don't move. Before the servos get installed, I need to mark where my fins are going to go so I make sure that I'm not cutting through the teeth. The fins are mounted between one half inch and one inch inside the midwing section. I'm just using a pen to mark out where the teeth will go so I know that I can't place my servo wire through that area. Once done, I'll take my knife and cut out these sections. And the key is to be sure it's very, very straight because we don't want the fins to lean side to side. Fin locations have been set, then I could set my servo in place. I like to put my servo about halfway down the elevon, and the reason for this is at extremely high speeds, the elevon can flex, and therefore I want my control horn to be as close to the center of the elevon surface as possible. While I'm using a hot work tool here, you can simply cut all the way through the airplane with a knife and just press the servo in place. I prefer mounting the servo upright as shown here rather than laying down simply because it's easier to service. Make tracks for the servo wires to follow by cutting them in with a knife. I'm using a hot work tool simply to widen the gap and make it a little bit easier to install. Simply press them in place all the way down to the center of the airplane. Control horns should be mounted so that they line up with the servo horn, or at least as straight as possible. Set them in place and then drill through them with a small 16th inch drill bit. Then press the screws through the holes and secure the plate on the back side. The control rod is made from two clevises and a piece of the threaded rod. Clip one of the clevises into either the horn or the servo and then install the threaded rod. Install the other clevis on the other part and then using a pair of diagonals or wire cutters cut off the threaded rod to the right length. Now it's time to glue the fins in place. Run a bead of glue between the two cuts you made earlier. Be sure to fill the cuts up with a good amount of welder glue as this will hold the fins in place. If you need to, you can cut a little bit of extra off the tabs just to be sure that the tabs fit between the spars. The air dam should be placed in the middle of the midwing section, that is three and a half inches from either edge. Air dams not only help the airplane at low speed and keep it from stalling, but they also help greatly in crosswinds, and thus I highly recommend you install them. I'm using a hot work tool to cut out some of the airframe, but a knife works just fine. Mark the leading edge of the wing at three and a half inches from the center. Don't measure along the wing, but across the wingspan. Make a mark and then slide the air dam in place. Then, using the air dam as a jig, make a mark where the air dam will sink into the foam. Then, use a hot work tool or a knife to make the cut. Fill all of your cuts with welder adhesive and slide the air dam into place. The winglets can now just be glued onto the wingtips 
and then the last part is installing the motors. The motors, I'm running a laminate strip along the motor mount and over the back. The reason for this is to keep the motor mount from tearing apart in a crash. While not absolutely necessary, it certainly does make everything stronger. If your motors didn't come with an X mount, I would highly recommend buying a few of them, as they make it much stronger. However, in this kit are included extra wooden mounts for your motor, just in case you want to use them. The motors are simply screwed into the wooden blocks on the back. You'll want the motors to be perfectly straight, and the reason for this is to make sure that it thrusts off exactly straight and doesn't cause the airplane to torque roll. The rest of the electronics installation up to you. Generally, I bury the speed controls just in front of the motor mounts, and the rest of it can go in the battery bay. I'm IB Crazy, and thanks for flying.